So we have formulas for arithmetic sequences and geometric sequences. Okay? Whenever we are going from one term to the next by addition or subtraction or multiplication and division, we know how to fit those to a formula. Okay? What we don't know is recursive formulas. And what that means is that the term that we actually have depends on more than just the previous term and a set rate or difference. Okay? So what I have behind me is the Fibonacci sequence. Okay? You may have seen it before, but basically you start with 1 and 1, and then to get the next term you always just add the two terms before it. So to get the third term we add the first two, 1 plus 1 is 2. To get the next one, the 2 before it, before it 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5, the next term would be 8, so on and so forth. Okay? So we can't just write a term by the term right previous to it. Okay? We have to actually have it written in terms of the t terms before it and the one before that. So how we would actually write out the Fibonacci sequence in sort of notation we're used to with our a sub 1's and 2's and n's is we define our first two terms as a sub 1 and then our a sub n is just going to be a sub n minus 2 which is actually two terms before plus a sub n minus 1 which is the term before the term we're looking at. It's a little bit hard to do from an abstract view so what I'm going to do is try one out. Okay, so what we have is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's try to find the sixth term. a sub 6. To find the sixth term, we want to find a sub 6 minus 2, just a sub 4, plus a sub 6 minus 1, a sub 5. a sub 4 is our fourth term, so we just have 1, 2, 3, 4 a sub 5 is our next term, which is going to be 5. And so a sub 6 is just going to be equal to 8. Okay? So by just adding the two terms before it, which we can write as a sub n minus 1 and minus 2, and them together we are able to find terms in the Fibonacci sequence. This is convenient for going down the row, but it's not convenient for finding terms way down the line. If I wanted to find the 100th term, I have to have the 99th and the 98th. In order to find the 99th and 98th, I would need to know the ones before that as well. Okay? So these aren't quite as easy to use as any other, just a sub n is equal to a set formula, because in order to find any term, we need to know the ones previous to it. Okay? But either way, it's a good way to find a sequence when you're starting at the beginning and just moving forward down the line.